for the San Joaquin Basin, San Joaquin River, there's several regulatory processes going on. Um, Steve had mentioned earlier the state board is working on uh, several different phases of the update of the Delta Water Quality Control Plan. Phase one is San Joaquin flows. Um, there's also a component of phase two, which is inflow outflow. There is a little bit of water that does come from the San Joaquin that uh, needs to flow into the Delta in order to flow back out. And then of course phase three is their implementation. Um, there is also several Federal Energy Regulatory Commission projects going on. There's two on the Merced River and there's two on the Tuolumne River. And so there's several of these processes all going on. Julie had mentioned the Central Valley Improvement Act. There is, uh, the Stanislaus River is part of the Central Valley project. And there is some work that's going on, um, both based on the biological opinions that happened in the past and also the ongoing uh, studies that the Central Valley Project Improvement Act um, corresponds to. With that being said, um, there was an effort to try and get a settlement on these things um, between the water users, the environmental organizations, the regulatory agencies, et cetera, called the San Joaquin Tributary Settlement Process, tributaries being the three tributaries other than the main stem, the Fryant, uh, Fryant area. Um, as an outgrowth of that, uh, we started working on um, Stanislaus River as trying to figure out well, what can we do to use to bring science into this process. There is also some other processes, uh, regulatory processes and other things that have influences on this, um, the water fix and eco restore, the, uh, the successor to the, Calf, uh, to the Bay Delta Conservation Plan. And then also flood safe, which we don't always hear about, which is a D DWR program that's doing planning. And there is a regulatory component with uh, the Central Valley Regional, the Central Valley Flood Board. But you put all this together with the settlement process, um, we tried to figure out how to break this up, how to work on it. Originally, they had three different groups. They had a, a plenary meeting where all our bosses went to the, to the meetings. We had a process work group, which were uh, a lot of lawyers and um, the next level management folks, and then a technical work group. The technical work group actually split off and decided that we're gonna have a science evaluation team um, this was an idea that we wanted to be able to evaluate any sort of proposals, conservation measures that came out of a settlement to make sure that they actually fit what we are after, that we are actually trying to inject science into this process. Um, and there was another group called the Water Management Group, which really never got off, off the ground, but there was discussions of it. But in, in that process, um, we wanted to look at the Stanislaus River first, not because it was the most important, um, a little bit of it because there were some priorities on there with the Central Valley Improvement Act and the biological opinions. But a lot of it also is we had, uh, we had quite a bit of data and quite a bit of work on it. So we decided to look at the Stanislaus River as our first step with the idea that we would continue on to the other two tributaries and to the main stem and try to fit the whole thing into one system. So with the science evaluation process, um, we were delegated a certain part of the logic chain. If you look at this, um, we are handed major uh, goals and vision for the Central Valley or the San Joaquin Basin as it moves its way down. Um, anyhow, if you look through the, the logic chain, you know, you get a problem statement. Well, we, we know we have issues on this. We have regulatory issues that are going down. But we have Central Valley goals. A lot of our fish species especially are, are uh, genetically very similar between the Sacramento and San Joaquin. There's a lot of mixing that goes on for the anatomous fish uh, very easily seen. Um, so it's the Central Valley objectives that we're given through Central Valley Improvement Act, through Delta Water Quality Control Plan, through de my department's uh, uh, various regulatory policies and, and laws. So from that, you split the thing up and you're trying to figure out a scope for the geography of the San Joaquin Basin. And you're handed plan goals, you're handed um, basically the setup for what you're after to develop objectives. So the SEP team, where we step in is that objectives phrase, phase. We're looking at trying to do objectives for goals that are already handed to us. First starting with biological objectives, then looking at um, uh, the environmental objectives, finally coming, uh, when we look at environmental objectives combined with current conditions, we can come up with um, conservation needs. And the conservation needs then should lead to conservation measures. 
So again, we're looking at the Stanislaus River, not because it's the most important of the three tributaries, but it was a good place to start. Uh, one of the things that, that kind of limited us on this is we want to look at, at smart objectives or objectives for the Stanislaus River, not for the Central Valley, not for the Stanislaus River and main stem, not for the Stanislaus main stem and delta. We're trying to look at this point to say, what can we do within this one watershed to look at objectives? Later on, we'd go ahead and fold it in for the San Joaquin Basin to try and get it there. But the first thing was just to tease out the, the first part on the Stan River. And I do have shown on there, there are a couple dams on there, as most people know. Just about all our major rivers are dammed. Um, on the Stanislaus, which is like our other, three, our other two tribs, we have, we have kind of a series of, of what we usually refer to as rim dams. It's not as simple, get over this dam and then we're up into the upper watershed. We actually have to get through a couple, Tulak Dam and uh, New Maloney's Dam to start getting up to the upper watershed. The other thing we decided to do, we're going to work on the three salmonid species. We know there, there are other ecosystem issues out there, but the salmonid issues in the Stanislaus River and the San Joaquin Basin are in terrible shape. And so our feeling is, is that if we work on these, we get some good biological objectives for the salmonid species, we do a lot for the rest of the ecosystem and ecosystem services. It doesn't necessarily do everything, but it gets us a long ways. Um, and this is just to show, yeah, the, the, the fall run uh, Chinook salmon is the main salmon that we have left uh, of any numbers. We also do have uh, populations of Omicus, some of which uh, are anatomous. And we have a few spring running fish that uh, different people argue are true spring runs. Some people say, oh, no, not quite. But we have some of those in there. But we also have a program for the main stem restoration at Fryant um, to actually introduce them back into the system. So we do have the three, the three fish in there. But one of the things to notice is that this system, this is a combined of the, of the TRIBS. We have a very, very, uh, <coughs> very varied system. We have these populations that go up and go down. Um, but one of the things that happens over the last uh, few decades is when we go up, we don't go up near as high as we used to. We still go down quite a bit. Um, we have no problem going down on our population numbers. We have a lot of problem going back up again. And so it is a good place to start on these issues. So again, one of the things we wanted to do was develop SMART objectives, and that's just the acronym Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Um, Julie had talked about uh, adaptive management, and if you do not have SMART objectives, you have a real hard time doing adaptive management because you have a, real, have a real hard time on figuring out exactly what's going on in the system because you don't have any base to, to compare it to. It says, oh yeah, we managed for this. Are we meeting, are you meeting what? Well, are you meeting your objectives? And if it's a smart objective, you can actually try to, to put something in there that's measurable and time bound. Um, and even though we worked pretty hard to make sure this was the case, um, it's not real easy to actually get down into the details and figure out that it fits this real well, especially on some of the measurable time-bound stuff. But I think a uh, good part of our conversations were trying to get this in place. So we worked on um, the salmon population viability uh, pyramid. And one of the things that, that we can kind of get out of the way right away is the spatula structure on the bottom. Spatula structure, if we do something to make sure we have the three tribs having healthy, viable populations, we've addressed that issue. All right. So what we did key in on is diversity. So life history diversity, meaning freshwater diversity. And again, if we're looking at the watershed issues, we're mostly looking at diversity of the juveniles coming back out of the, the, the system. So for this, we looked at size and age at migration. Um, they have some diversity in that, so we have both the small fish you know, which, uh, you know, would be fingerlings, fry, all the way up to the larger fish, the smolts that are coming out of the system. And um, that follows right on with age at the same way. The other thing was genetic diversity. Um, we do have a hatchery system on the San Joaquin. It's not on the Stanislaus, it's on the Merced. But we also have a huge stray rate from the McCollumy and the Sacramento system of, of a lot of fish coming on down into the San Joaquin. Um, and then also, 
integration issues. Uh, once we start getting spring run back into the system, we can easily have integration problems going on with the fall run. So we also want to make sure we address that. And then the other issue, which is actually a little bit harder and more complex to be able to address, is the idea of productivity and abundance. And looking at those two together was, was pretty much the way we looked at it. Because, because of the geographic focus of the Stanislaus River, um, the abundance figure is a little hard to, to attack because we also have delta issues and ocean issues to deal with for adults. And with the life cycle, for the, for the watershed, there's one major area where you have influence, and that's the, the production of juveniles. So when we look at that uh, abundant product productivity, we're really looking for this system at what we can do for survival, production of juveniles through the system. Um, one of the things that we do get from the literature and we see from a lot of other places that are healthy, we see high uh, freshwater survival rates compared to what we have. Uh, to kind of base this, uh, to go into a little bit more detail, if I've got enough time, um, these are cohort replacement rates. And th the takeaway message on this is if you want to actually have a population that's increasing, you got to get that line to be, to be above zero or above one. Sorry about that. Um, if it's below one, that means you have a declining population. Anything above it is an increasing population. On the San Joaquin system, we're usually below it. current cohort replacement rates on average are greatly below it. So we have a very, very unhealthy system as far as what the current conditions are. On the other hand, in systems that are healthy, even ones that are disturbed to some degree with, with dams and other stuff up in Washington and Oregon, the cohort replacement rate is much greater. So it's, it's something that we should be striving for on the San Joaquin system. So we did come up with a set of, of uh, objectives, biological objectives. Again, this goes through life history. Um, these are fairly simple, straightforward. I can't go into details all of them because we don't quite have enough time, but it's basically timing of, of the individuals coming down into the delta. And then uh, proportions. And in, in what we came up with as a group was to hold them pretty much the way they are now with a little bit of a push on those to get them just a little bit wider uh, diversity. The hard one was working on was the productivity. Again, we got from the literature and also from uh, data that we have in our system to see what's actually possible and what sort of timing we can put on this, what sort of survival rates. We can get survival rates for fresh water and then we try to break that up into the fresh water component of what's the delta and what's the watershed. And to do that, you can see um, like productivity down for A, uh, fresh water, water survival at 2.24%. That's the whole system coming out of the delta and getting into the ocean, the smoke. And you could look at that for the Stanislaus and break it down through uh, a river mile or some other proportional figure, come up with what you need. So that's a 10.2. Um, and we gave nine years, basically three, three uh, generations. And then we also had a genetic, um, which again was just to make sure we don't have too much uh, hatchery influence. We also came up with a set of environmental objectives. We've got a whole suite of these things. This is just one temperature, um, which is out there. Um, US EPA has, has got some good criteria on this. We worked on this fairly, uh, fairly long to set up the whole suite, but some of, some of them were easier than other ones. And then uh, one last place, uh, again, we were handed goals for the Central Valley. We broke those into objectives. And we're now working on this part right down here. We're working on stressors. So we're, we're just about done at this point, but we still have some work to do. And then the last thing I want to make sure that, that uh, people understand, this is, this is a pretty good sized process on who's involved. We've got a lot of uh, environmental organizations. We have uh, the three fishery agencies all heavily involved. And uh, we even have state board staff calling in and, and giving us uh, help where, where needed and stuff. So we actually have a really good group. We've invited others. It is a more or less pri uh, public sort of process. But we have this one core team that really shows up and does the work. So thanks a lot.